Hey guys, this is FishNankGuy67, and today I'm making a video on algae. So, as if you've watched my previous videos, you probably know that I've had a problem in the 10 gallon with algae. I tore it down um, because of hair algae, and I set it back up again. It's doing fine now. But I just wanted to talk about some ways to prevent it or keep it down if you already have it. So I'll just start with lights because that's something that most everyone has on their tank and the thing with lights is just probably to keep the time limit down. So I, if you have a single tube T8 or a single tube fixture you can probably use it for 10 to around 10 or 11 hours a day and you shouldn't have much of a problem with algae or at least for lights if you're doing a lot of other stuff like fertilization or CO2 that's different but if you're running high lights you're gonna wanna keep it down to 7, 8 or 9 hours depending on how high Probably lo the higher the lighting is, the lower you want to do it. So, when you like, if you first get a high light, you shouldn't have it on very long. Have it on for about seven to eight hours a day. And if you don't have a problem with algae, then you can increase the lighting up to about eight or nine hours. At well, that's when you should just um, stop increasing. But that's what I did with this light and I plan to do that with the light I ordered. I just had this on for about eight hours um, every day and then the next week I did nine hours. Oh sorry, I started with seven then I did eight. Now I'm up to nine hours a day. I think I'm just gonna keep it at that. It's a good time. It has enough time for the plants to get enough nutrients. You can leave it again on longer with smaller fixtures and even if you have this kind of fix, you can leave it on longer, but always try to be careful to leave it on too long because that's most likely what you're going to get algae from. And a second, um, often algae, imp like, attractor is probably when you're dosing fertilization or CO2, you're going to want to keep the rate steady. One way to do this is to f um, have it on a schedule when you're changing the CO2 cartridges don't just like stop one week and then start again another and stop. Don't change it very much. One thing I I started doing is I started changing out the cartridges. As you can see here, I have two cartridges. Um, I I'll just try to give this example. That one's one and that one's two. Every or the first week I'll change. Um, the first cartridge, and the second week I'll take the second, third, first, fourth, second, and that makes it so it's a consistent rate of CO2 coming out instead of just changing them both at the same time causing the CO2 to stop for a day or longer depending on when you start it and stop it and refill and everything. But you're just going to want to keep that consistent. You don't necessarily have to do what I'm doing and alternate but don't just stop. If you're going to stop, try to ease out of it. Make sure you don't have much problems because then your tank will adjust. Because if you have a sudden increase or decrease in pH, then it's going to increase your algae growth. So another thing that causes algae is when nutrients build up. So if you don't have any water flow in your tank, there's going to be a lot of nutrient buildup, like, for example, right here in this area, there's going to be a lot of nutrient buildup, and there's not going to be any here. And again, that's another thing that causes a lot of algae. One way to help with this is just having a circulation pump. It doesn't have to be too big. You don't want it, like, completely tipping over plants and knocking things over or sucking things in. You're just going to want it off so it sways back and forth. I actually have it off now. I'm... If I can turn it back on quickly, I'll do that.
now it's on again, and it started pushing some duckweed, and the fish think it's food. But in a second here, you'll start seeing the plants move. Usually it's the jungle bell, which you can kind of see right now, it's swaying back and forth that one leaf. And also these leaves down here are moving a little bit. But yeah, you're just going to want a circulation pump to decrease nutrient buildup. And right now that's probably too high, and it sucks in a little bit. But the next thing you're going to want to do, well this is actually one of the first things you should do when you're setting up a tank. After you cycled the tank and added the fish, or at least some of the fish, you're going to want to get a cleanup crew. What I recommend for this is either nitrate snails, auto cats, sh a mono shrimp, a few a mono shrimp, or a lot of cherry shrimp, if you're more into the looks. Um, you there's a lot of fish you can look up, any really catfish, but I prefer auto cats. And also, I'm not so sure if these help with algae, but when overfeeding. Cory cats do a pretty good job. I have a peppered Cory, it's right here. And whenever there's leftover food, he eat it. He eats it. I just fed them actually. You can see a few crumbs down there. But he ate most of it. So that's mostly what you should get. There's also actual like mid level and top level swimming fish, like American flagfish that eat um, hair algae, I think. So those are all good choices, and again, you can look it up. So that's one of the first things you should do. And also, this is if you're fertilizing, like, Flourish, Excel, or Flourish, any of those products, or just any um, plant product, and, or a gun dosing CO2. And if you're doing both especially, you're going to want to get duckweed. As you can see, that's duckweed. A lot of people say it's a pain. I don't see any problem with it. You can suck it up in your siphon when you're doing a water change. And you can scoop it out. I haven't had it so long, so I might not be the best person to say, talk about it. But as you can see, it's not very thick. It, Or it's not overgrowing or taking over anything. And it doesn't block much light. You can see a little bit of a green glow at the top but very minimal, and the camera might actually enhance it a bit. So duckweed just absorbs any excess nutrients in the tank that your plants aren't absorbing, and it fights for the same nutrients as algae, which is practically like a competitor that usually wins. <clears throat> so duckweed is great with that kind of thing, and also keeps your water clear. My water isn't so clear now, but that's just because um, I haven't been keeping up on maintenance this past week. Of course, I just did a water change. That was my way of trying to keep catch up again. So, yeah, that moved me on to the last thing is doing frequent water changes. You should do about... What I do is about, I think, 10% water change every few days, like three days. And if you don't like doing water changes, do it at least a 20% water change every... Or a 10% water change at least every week with a 30 to 40 percent water change a month. So just to, the 40 percent is more just to come kind of cycle the water again and make sure that there's no bad things that have been staying in your tank for a long time. And this helps a lot with algae. It keeps it so then the nutrients don't build up and also your water tends to be clearer if you do more frequent water changes and your plants like it because tap water contains certain nutrients that the plants grow and thrive off. And I really think that's mostly all you can do with algae. You can also use some products like Algae Fix, but you're going to want to be careful. That's more if you already have an algae problem and you can't really get rid of it. You That should be kind of the last thing you do. But be careful because it can tend to hurt some of your bottom dwellers like shrimp or catfish. I think it's because it's taking the food that they eat, or maybe it does something to harm them. I don't know, but it doesn't usually look good for them. 
and that's one of the last things you should do. So just reviewing, keep the CO2 and fertilization steady, lights 7 to um, 9 hours a day, circulation in your tank, do frequent water changes 10% every 4 days or so, and just have a few fish to kind of take care of your load. I have less, so don't think that this is how much you should. I have a little. I should have a little bit more, but this tank hasn't been running so long. It doesn't have much algae besides on this driftwood, which shrimp um, do a lot better on driftwood. So if you have a problem with hardscape algae, shrimp are a really good choice. So that's it for the video today. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe. Thanks for watching.